Our second lecture video on temperature and heat will cover heat. Heat is a form of internal kinetic and potential energy contained in an object and it is associated with the motion of the object's atoms and molecules. At higher temperatures, atoms vibrate more rapidly, which gives them more kinetic energy. Heat is transferred from objects at a higher temperature to objects at a lower temperature. To raise the temperature, we essentially need to speed up the atoms. In order to speed the atoms up, we have to add energy to them. This energy is heat. Since heat is a form of energy, it is measured in joules or foot-pounds. However, there are some special units for heat that were developed before scientists knew that heat was actually a form of energy. The first special unit for heat is the calorie, abbreviated CAL. The calorie is the amount of heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree Celsius. This is not the same thing as a food calorie. Next, we have the kilocalorie, abbreviated KCAL. The kilocalorie is the amount of heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water one degree Celsius. One food calorie is the same as one kilocalorie. Last, we have the British thermal unit, abbreviated BTU. The BTU is the amount of heat energy needed to raise the temperature of one pound of water one degree Fahrenheit. When we are talking about heat, it is worth mentioning absolute zero again. When all heat has been removed, you have reached absolute zero. Again, this is where intermolecular movement ceases to exist. Temperatures lower than absolute zero cannot be reached. However, there is no upper limit on the temperature because you can always add more energy to increase the temperature. You may have noticed that heat and energy have the same units as work, so there are some relations that exist between heat and work. These mechanical equivalencies of heat will be helpful if we have to convert units or if we want to know how much work needs to be done to produce a certain amount of heat. One calorie of heat is produced by 4.19 joules of work. One kilocalorie of heat is produced by 4,190 joules of work. Lastly, one BTU of heat is produced by 778 foot-pounds of work. Again, these equivalencies will be used as unit conversions. It is important to note that temperature and heat are not the same thing. Again, temperature is a measure of the hotness or coldness of an object. Heat, on the other hand, is the total thermal energy that can be transferred from objects at higher temperatures to objects at lower temperatures. If you need to change the temperature of something, the first thing you can do is do work on the object. As an example, if you are drilling a screw into a piece of wood, the drill is doing work on the screw. If you have ever touched a screw after using a drill to take it out of a piece of wood, you will know that it can be pretty hot. Since the drill did work on the screw, the temperature on the screw is increased. The other way you can change the temperature of something is to supply energy to the object. This energy can be mechanical, chemical, or even electrical energy. Let's take a look at a couple of examples relating to heat. How much work must a person do to offset eating a 425 calorie bowl of ice cream? First of all, anytime a problem is talking about food calories, you have to remember that is the same thing as a kilocalorie. So we have 425 kilocalories. The rest of this problem is essentially a unit conversion type problem. We know that there are 4,190 joules in one kilocalorie, and joules are a unit of work. Therefore, we can multiply by this conversion factor and the units of kilocalories disappear. We are left with an answer of 1.78 times 10 to the sixth joules or, changing the metric prefix, 1.78 megajoules. Let's take a look at one more example. Natural gas yields 1.20 times 10 to the fourth kilocalories per kilogram of heat when burned. How many joules of work result from burning one metric ton? We can also set this problem up like a unit conversion. All we have to do is make sure the units that we don't want cancel off and we are left with units of joules of work. We will start by writing 1.20 times 10 to the fourth kilocalories over one kilogram because we have 1.20 times 10 to the fourth kilocalories per kilogram of heat. Then we can multiply by the conversion factor that there are 4,190 joules in one kilocalorie. 
Now we also know that we are burning one metric ton of natural gas. One metric ton is the same thing as 1,000 kilograms. If we multiply by 1,000 kilograms, units of kilograms are gone and the units of kilocalories already disappeared from the last conversion. This leaves us with units of joules, which is exactly what we want. Multiplying, we see that 5.03 times 10 to the 10 joules of work result from burning one metric ton. This concludes our discussion on heat.